Tourism is big business in Kenya. World-class wildlife parks have made the country a popular destination for tourists from right around the world. It's a major foreign currency owner and employs over 400,000 people. But as David McKenzie reports, the sector is struggling to regain viability after this year's post-election violence. In the sleepy pre-dawn hours, J.P. Lemire always fires up the tourists with his butane burners. He came all the way from Canada to ply his trade at this ballooning mecca, where tourists flock to see the Kenyan savanna from a bird's eye view. But the image of Kenya's violent post-election crisis still casts a shadow on the tourism industry here. Months of political and ethnic violence earlier this year rocked the nation, and that image has lingered. It's left Le Maire with little to celebrate. It is quite different than last year, definitely. Last year we were uh, very busy. All the lodges were full, the balloons were full, we were turning away people uh, for the balloon rides. And so this year is a little bit different. So. A lot different. The political turmoil in Kenya took a massive bite out of the tourist economy. The hotel and restaurant sector declined by 60% in the first quarter this year, compared with over 10% growth in the same period in 2007. This is one of the special treats in East African travel, a balloon ride over the Masai Mara and then breakfast right here in the savannah. But many people cancelled their bookings to Kenya because of the post-election violence. And our tour companies and luxury resorts are struggling to make ends meet. This is one of the best locations where this lodge is. It is actually settled on a, you know, the, the saddle of this hill, commanding a great panoramic view of uh, the savannas. Uh, traditionally known as a manyata. Eh? Herman Mwasagua is the manager of the luxury Serena Safari Lodge, one of the main draws of the Masai Mara Reserve, where bush chic is taken to another level. Animals find beverage. Though Kenya's been peaceful for months, the lodge has felt the after effects with an average of just 30% occupancy. Basically, for a traveler, when they are making a decision to go to a destination, they, they, they want to, to be assured of where they are going. And with what was being broadcasted, basically, it tarnished their image and they had to make other options to other destinations. <laughs> One upshot, tour operators say, is that with fewer people checking in, those tourists who do come get a much more personalized service. But what the tourism industry really needs is for people to flock back to experience this natural wonder. David McKenzie, CNN, Masai Mara. Well, to throw a little bit more light on the problems facing Kenya's uh, tourism industry at the moment, I'm joined by the country's Minister of Tourism, Najib Balala. Uh, hello to you. Very good to have you with us Thank here you. today. Uh, there's, there were some interesting uh, factors brought up in that report there, one particularly talking about luxury re resort accommodation down yeah. uh, by 30 percent. That's a lot, isn't it? It must be very worrying. Unfortunately, when January, February we had the problems, uh, basically the whole economy was shut down. But now we are coming back. I have been out of the country uh, two months uh, trying to market Kenya. Uh, the signs are very positive. Kenya's tourism product has not been affected. It's safe. Uh, it's one of the best products we have in the world. And we, we say that this is a time for people to come and see the migration. It's the but how, biggest, can you, how, can you, how can you reassure the tourists, the potential tourists, that it will actually be safe? Because, of course, it is still fresh in people's minds that there was uh, that violence surrounding the elections, and that was very significant. Well, the government commitment by having a coalition government, the government commitment by forming, by addressing the core issues of why we went to problems, addressing the issue of the constitution, addressing the issue of the land reforms, addressing the issues of the electoral reforms or democratic institutions that will uphold the democratic values of the country that will guarantee safety and stability of the country as well as will guarantee investment both in the tourism industry but investment in the country. So are, are Mr. Odinga and Mr. Kabaki fully reconciled at the moment and is this a, 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 full, a full path to peace? Yes, it is a, a one government, not a two government. Uh, we are all committed. We have a vision to achieve. Uh, we have to prove to the people that we want to be in positions where we can work for our people. The tourism industry, for example, uh, we know we were 70% uh, below, below the figures, but now we are back. Uh, the figures are showing very good. We have the best uh, product in, in the whole region, beach and safari combination, which is great. And now we have cultural tourism, we have sports tourism, we have the best marathoners in the, in the world.
So you, you come you, there and you see them. You must be a very busy man at the moment then, seeking to reassure people that Kenya is indeed a safe destination. Yeah. It's perfectly safe for them to go. Yeah, I'm enjoying my work because also my background was tourism before. So I know what the problem, I know how to solve it, and I'm working with the stakeholders in the tourism industry, how together we're going to, we are working with government to invest into marketing Kenya. Kenya is yet to be discovered. What, what the number that we have received, 1.8 million tourists last year, was a small figure. We need to increase that figure, and we have a big country with a diversified product that we can achieve. Uh, to share with the people of the world. And of course you're over here in the UK at the moment uh, along with other delegates uh, yeah. from Kenya, particularly uh, Mr. Odinga himself, so yeah. this is very important isn't it? Yes, this is, uh, we are conducting a business forum to assure the world that we are safe but also we are open to do business. It's not business as usual uh, like uh, bureaucracy and procurement that will deter people from coming to invest into Kenya. We are transparent and we are, we are committed in fighting corruption. That's why we're inviting investors to come to Kenya to invest into the country. But of course, if tourists do come back to Kenya, they will also perhaps see uh, the results of the violence that unfolded earlier on in the year, because of course there still are many displaced people in the country, aren't there, as a result of that? Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the displaced people are still there, but they're very far from the tourist areas. And tourists have never been affected during the fracas in, in January, February. Neither have the areas been affected. So it's quite uh, different areas where we're talking about. Okay, uh, Mr. Balala, thank you very much for joining us thank here on much. CNN. Very good to thank have you, you with us today. Thank you. Thank you.